have you here. My name is Margaret from Sacramento Art Classes and I'll be your teacher tonight. Um, I'm so glad that you're taking time in your summer break, uh, or summertime anyway, to be here tonight for this free class. You may have noticed that there was a sign out that said tip jar and that is definitely not expected. So um, if you are here for the free class, you're in the right place. Um, I'm hoping that maybe you had a chance to pre-draw or trace the butterfly template that I put up for you. And if you didn't, we'll just have a few short minutes to get that going for tonight. But um, I wanna welcome you. The format for tonight's class is um, I will be painting on the table with the camera for you to see what's going on and I'll try to zoom in as much as I can. And I'm gonna keep my eye on the comments in case you have a question, I'll try to answer it while we're live. And if I miss it, then I will go through all the comments over the next day or two and then make sure to answer you that way. So if you have a technical question or something, I can take care of it then. Um, it is always fun if you are willing to say hello and tell me where you're from because it's kind of fun to see how far people come to, to do these classes. And this is a beginning class, so if you've never done it before, you can be a brand new beginner or um, kids are welcome. I'm a school teacher, I teach kindergarten through eighth grade, so I always try to keep the classes um, available for kids also. After tonight's video is done, um, Facebook will post it as a recorded video and I'll leave it up for a while. So if you miss part of it or you wanna look at it again later or share it, you can do that at another time too. So know that. Um, let me see, what else? The next class, next month, we're gonna do this again. I'm kind of experimenting with times and days. It seems like Friday night when I used to always do this, people, it, the numbers of people were dwindling and I'm thinking maybe because now we're opening up a little bit from COVID and people are going out, maybe Friday night is a date night and maybe people don't wanna paint. So I'm testing out Tuesday nights. So our next one of these is gonna be on Tuesday, July 27th and I'm actually gonna do it at 6.30 instead of seven. So testing out the time, we'll see. I hope that works and people can be done a little bit earlier as well. And the subject for next month's class is giraffes. So we will do a neck up of the giraffe, not the full body, and it can be a fun and whimsical one with rainbow colors or a serious giraffe. So, uh, and that'll be for beginners just like this. So hopefully you'll join me for that one. Um, I think that is all I need to tell you right now while you're looking at me. So what I'm gonna do is switch the camera back down onto the table and um, start talking to you about our supplies and we'll do our sketch and get started. I think we're gonna finish up a little bit early on this one tonight too. So here I come for the extreme close up, and you're gonna see the camera move again to my back wall of the studio here and now down onto the table. If you missed my little talk at the beginning, this would be a good class for you to have something like a hair dryer or a heat gun to dry your paint a little bit faster because um, all those beautiful colored spots that you see inside of the butterfly, they're gonna need some time to dry before we can do the dark outline on the butterfly. So um, if you can go and grab that at some point in time, that would be a good thing to happen. Make your life easier and give you more of a shot at getting this thing done tonight. So, um, for future reference, this is a template that I uh, provide ahead of time. So next month for the giraffe, this will be posted within that Facebook event. And um, if you go inside of the event, you'll see a discussion tab. And if you click on that, you'll see a few posts in there, probably from me or maybe other people. And there's always one of these in there. So you can print it ahead of time and you can trace it onto your paper. Um, or just have it to copy. So that's always available and we'll work from this a little bit tonight. Um, let's talk about colors. And I'm trying to, hi from Portland, Oregon, yay. I'm my, for whatever reason, the little, the little area um, that lets me see your comments is so teeny tiny. And so Marsha, you're telling me to don't forget to tell them about something, but it cuts you off. Marsha's probably going to say, oh, yes, I know what she's going to say. I also have a Facebook group that you can um, join if you want to. It's called Sacramento Art Classes Students. And what that is is a place where after we're done tonight, 
I'll post my finished copy and you can post yours if you want to share with everybody else. And the only people who see that are the students who have taken the class. You have to actually ask to be in that group. So um, and once you ask, of course, I'll approve you. And if you want, you can post your finished pieces there. And everyone's so nice and supportive. They always tell, you know, give you good comments and compliments on things. So it's kind of fun and it's a safe place for you to post your work if you choose. Okay, so um, for tonight, these are the supplies and then we'll get right into the sketch. I'm going to use three different brushes tonight and they are from smaller to larger, smallest to largest. This is a number eight. Um, sizes of brushes are weird. They're, every brand has different kind of uh, sizes, just like clothing. So this is a very small detail brush. It's kind of like about a nail, nail polish brush. Um, so I'm going to use a detail brush. Mine is a number eight, but sometimes they're like a zero or one or a two. So there I have that one. Um, and these next two, I have a number six round. And this one is probably like maybe a number eight or number 10 round. Um, I use these two different ones because this one here that's brown has a much sharper point, uh, more precise for painting. But when I really get into the small stuff, then I'm gonna use something like that. You're also gonna see me use a Sharpie. And I don't want you to use a Sharpie, but I'm using it so that you will be able to easily see the, the sketch and the drawing that I'm making. So when you do yours, you can see more easily than when, um, when I'm using a pencil. So I'll have that. And then tonight I'm using um, all the paints that I have tonight are here and I'm using all Daniel Smith paints, which is a professional grade paint. Um, I use them because I just love their colors and they have quite a lot of pigment. But if you're using a, you know, a Crayola set or Prang or a student grade set, that's fine too. You can get beautiful colors with those. You just probably want to juice them up a little bit more with a little extra water so that the pigment really mixes in. And that said, sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the time, I like to use a spray bottle and I prime my paints ahead of time. So the ones I know I'm going to use, I'll just give them a little shot of a little mist. And just for time's sake, I'm missing all of mine because I don't quite know yet what I'm going to do. But what that does is it gets them kind of primed and ready to go. And um, they're a little juicier for you that way. So you may want to, if you get into this, you might want to have a little mister. Um, I also have a big jug of water here. You might have a bowl or a cup, whatever, for your rinsing. So, And um, one last thing, how about a paper towel or a Kleenex handy, just in case. You see probably a lot of junk on my tabletop here, <laughs> old paints, but that's because it's an art studio. Okay. So, um, gosh, I wish I could see your comments a little more easily. Sherry says, I'm making my own. I can't see it. Man, this is frustrating. I don't know why they're so tiny tonight. It only gives me like one time. Oh, my own butterfly. Okay, Sherry, that sounds cool. And that's a great idea. Okay, so let's talk about how to get this done quickly. Um, one of the things that I teach my students is about symmetry. Let me zoom in for you a little bit. Sorry before I start doing this. For me to zoom in, it's very low tech here. I have to stand on a little stool and then I use my iPhone as my camera. So I have to kind of stand up and pinch, pinch in or pinch out on the screen to make things bigger or smaller. So we're going to go with about this for now. And if we need to, I'll make it a little bit larger later for you. Okay, so symmetry. Symmetry means if you um, cut something in half down the middle, then it will be matching or the same on either side. So you can see that the design is basically the same on either side. So whatever you choose to do for your design tonight, I'm hoping that you do not feel like you have to use this design pattern that I have. If you're brand new to painting or if you paint a little bit more slowly, you may want to have something a little simpler without so many dots because you know you have to be precise with that and it takes you a little bit longer so don't feel like you have to do all the design that i have so the most important thing that we're going to do tonight and you remember you're doing this with pencil i'm doing it with this sharpie so you can see better um, i always like to start with the body of the butterfly and so i'm going to give it a little head your head might just be round I'll hold this up a little bit more so you can see, or it might have kind of, there you go, a little different shape. So that's kind of the head. 
and then um, this is an easy way if you're drawing from scratch right now give yourself whatever shape you want for your wing I'm right-handed so I usually start on the right side here if you're left-handed maybe you'll draw the left wing and this one has kind of an interesting scallop shape on the edge so I'll draw the upper wing like that if you're brand new, I will be pausing. Don't worry. I mean, if you've never done this with me before, I'm not going to just speed you through everything. I do like to pause and you can see that I talk a bit here. So there'll be time for you to catch up on things. Um, so there is our top wing. And then the bottom wing, let's see, is going to start right in here. It's about kind of, if you imagine about how skinny the body would be, you can see I put a little dot right here. This is where the lower wing is going to come out and it pulls down a little bit farther. Maybe yours is shaped a little bit differently, so whatever you like is fine. Some people even are doing their own design. Maybe they look things up on Google and, um, and they have their own shape that they want. Okay, so that is the trickiest part is just getting one side of this thing. Now, you're drawing on watercolor paper right now. I am drawing on just printer paper. So um, I'm, I don't want you to fold your paper in half or anything, but that is something that you, you could do later if you were making your own template. You could fold this in half and kind of trace it, fold it this way and turn it over and put it up against the window and then trace it through the window. But since we can't fold the watercolor paper, we're gonna just need to do our best to kind of replicate the shapes of these on the other side. So I just do the same thing. Um, you might wanna maybe put your finger on where the point is, or even put a dot out where you think the end of the wing should be based on maybe the length or the, the curve shape of the wing that you've already drawn. So I'll start up in here from where the head is and take that out to the point. By the way, this is recorded. So after tonight, let's say you, you can't keep up or you miss part of it or you wanna even watch it again or share with a friend, I leave these up as recordings on Facebook. So you can always go back and find them. Just go to Sacramento Art Classes page, click on e events, or you can even click on videos, either one, and look for this video and you'll be able to watch it again. So here we go, we're gonna do the scalloped kind of uh, pattern that we have, lacy sort of pattern edge of the upper wing. You can always use your finger maybe, or even your pencil to kind of see, did you get it down evenly? Is it crooked? Did one side go too far? Maybe you wanna use a pencil or a ruler or something to kind of get an idea of how far down you need to go with that. By the way, if anybody has a quick fix to how I can um, see more comments, that would be really helpful to me because I'm having a really hard time seeing any comments. Now all of a sudden they've gone away. So if you're asking me anything, man, it's so funny. Every time I do, oh, there they are again. When I, every week when I do the, these, Facebook makes a change. So for whatever reason the change tonight is that I can only see the tiniest little section of your comments so I'm not ignoring you um, but for whatever reason I can't see what you're asking me I'm sorry okay so let's go back in again and let's line up across from where this other wing the bottom wing started if you need to you can put a little dot there because you're using pencil and if your dot is too big you can always erase it and you're just gonna have that come out and join up right here where the upper and lower wing meets and bring it around with that scallop design down here to the bottom and this one has I don't know what kind of butterfly this is it just sort of has sort of this raindrop or water drop feel down here maybe there's a certain name for that as you can see I did mine a little bit crooked but we're just having fun we're not trying to do an um, botanical or like anatomically correct butterfly it's just for fun so if it's not exactly matchy matchy don't worry about it we're just having a fun time 
And once you get your wings drawn, you just want to give yourself the rest of the body. And you can even make your body a little bit longer than mine if you want to. Okay, so that is all I'm going to draw for tonight. And here's why. These guys, these antenna, I'm going to have you wait. If you've already drawn them, it's not a big deal. Well, that's totally fine. But um, I'm going to wait on these for now. Um, because I just, I have a little trick I want to show you when we get to them. So I'm not going to draw them just yet. I'm also not going to draw any of the inside stuff because maybe you want a more simple design than the one that I have here. Maybe you want to have something that you can do more quickly. So this way you can just do anything that you like. I'm trying to make it so you can see both of these. Um, and on, let's talk about colors for a second. Maybe you're finishing up your drawing and I want to talk to you about colors while you're doing that. Um, the colors that I used on this butterfly were, um, what is that one? I used Thalo Blue, which is P-H-T-H-A-L-O. Thalo Blue is the blue on here. And then I used um, a green called Thalo Green. That's the green. And then my purple here is Imperial Purple. So if you, if you like these colors and you have any version of blue, purple, and green, you can use those. But for tonight, since I've already done these three colors, I'm going to pick some new colors. So what I'm saying to you is pick three colors, any three that you like. Um, if you have trouble thinking about what colors go well together, you can think about a rainbow and the order of the colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. If the colors are three in a row in order, they're always going to look good next to each other. So for example, red, orange, and yellow would look good. Green, blue, and purple would look good. Or anywhere that you start on the rainbow, three colors in a row will look good. But So I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, I'll tell you what I'm using along the way. I haven't even decided yet, but I kind of think I'm going to go for maybe some more uh, like reds and maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do a red, orange, yellow tonight just to see what happens. So um, those are the colors that I'll probably use tonight. And then this background color here, you probably have something like a black. You might have a Mars black or a cobalt black. Um, you can see that this is not perfectly, it's not super dark black. It's, it's almost grayed down a little bit. And there's variations in the intensity of the black. And I do that on purpose. So that's kind of something I'm going to teach you tonight. So um, you don't have to go in with solid, solid black like a black hole. You can have variations in your black. Um, Daniel Smith has a color called Lunar Black, and there's also a Lunar Blue, which are both very dark and beautiful. So um, those are going to be possibilities for us tonight as well. So I really wish I could see if you have um, calm questions, but... I can't. So let's get started. Here is my sample drawing that I made ahead of time. And I'll do my best to give you as much view of both of these butterflies at the same time. So I'll probably have to, I'm going to do a little rearranging here. I'm going to move my, my uh, paper towel that I use for blotting. That's what you see right here. And my water is right here so that I can get to everything pretty closely and try to give you as much butterfly as possible. Okay, so here's our plan. Um, before I start the plan, can I see some thumbs up that people are ready or hearts or whatever you wanna click on so that I know that you're ready to go? If I don't see a lot, I'll wait another second and I'll just talk a little bit more um, because I don't want you to be like, freaking out and rushing a ton right at the beginning. Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up and some hearts, so we're good to go. Okay, cool, thanks people. Okay, um, what uh, we're doing a technique tonight called wet into wet, and that's a watercolor technique where it means that you're going to apply just water without any paint in it to the, the let's call these the pattern areas. I'm just gonna call them spots, whatever shape they are, we're gonna just call these spots tonight. So when we do wet into wet, that means we're adding clear water into one spot at a time, and then we're gonna put paint into it. The reason that we're gonna do that is because, I'm gonna make this a little bigger for you, if I can. I want you to be able to do some interesting mixes with um, the paints. Sorry, 
technical difficulties trying to get this a, zoom in a little bit closer maybe that's as close as I can get if it is I will hold this up for you periodically closer to the camera yep it's not letting me zoom in anymore some days since it's not like the Martha Stewart show oh there we go we don't always get I don't have like the uh, technical assistant here today it's all me so <laughs> thank you for being patient while I work out the bugs here and there okay so we're gonna wet um, one spot at a time I wouldn't suggest that we do the bigger ones first because that'll give you some practice before you need to get into the smaller ones where you're gonna have to have a more precise hand to make things happen so um, the colors that I'm gonna use let me pick them ahead of time and show them to you let's see here just in case you want to know I think I will use what is this one nope I don't want that one okay I'm gonna use this color right here which is called quinacridone magenta and I like to put a little bit out to the side here on the mixing area of the palette so that I can just dip into it and get it when I need it so I'm kind of juicing that up ahead of time so that one let's get rid of this guy because I don't want that and then I'm gonna use what else do I want not that guy let's have this one this guy right here is called what am I in uh, this is my imperial is it my imperial purple I think it might be so I'm gonna use a red or quinacridone rose this purple right here and let's pick something light just for fun this guy right here is called <laughs> I'm laughing because I can't read my own writing it's a light it's like a lavender color I'm sorry of how terrible I can't even read what I wrote I'm gonna put that over here so I have three colors they're gonna go really well together later I'll decide what how dark I want to go on the um, the outer dark area of the butterfly but I'm gonna go with those for now okay so let's move this guy out of the way and you won't really be able to see me dipping into the paint too much because we have so little room on the on the camera here okay so here we go with wet into wet first thing you want to do is get the brush that feels good to you this is my number six round um, I'm not going to be able to get super good detail with it but for now I'm not going to worry because what I'm going to do is just wet this large spot with just water like we talked about and I'm going to try and stay inside of my pencil lines but I know that this brush is not going to give me the precision that I want to get right up to those pencil lines and I'm not worried about it yet because here's what happens first let's go crazy let's take this the magenta color I'm gonna just touch it on with my brush like that see how it swims around on its own I'm not moving it around with the brush I'm just touching it on and now I'm gonna go to my darker color whatever your darker color is and I'm gonna touch it on out here okay now eventually they're gonna swim together or you can take your paper and tip it a little bit and they swim together a little on their own they don't need to even mix all the way there can be streaky parts of white in there and that's okay because it will give you a really interesting effect at the end and now once I've done that then I'm going to take my detail brush and it has water on it not a lot but it's just damp and now I'm gonna use it to pull the paint that I've just put on here all the way out to the line so here's where the precision comes I didn't have to be super precise with that larger brush I can take my time and do it with this guy I didn't put any new paint on this brush all I'm doing is dragging what's already on the paper around and pulling it all the way out to that pencil line with this guy and that's it and so you see that there's a lot of variation in the color there that's what happened here okay I used Dark, purple in the middle and blue on the outer edge and then I let it swim around and do its own thing and by the time it dried it made this very interesting kind of granulation and separation it's almost like um, I don't know it's almost like an interesting pattern inside of that spot so that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor is 
is letting it do its own magic. So I'm hoping that in this particular lesson, you will be able to let that happen for yourself. And um, there's no reason why you can't put 20 colors in here. If you just want to play and have fun with lots of different colors, you can do that. Anything goes. And it's going to be really exciting at the end for me to see when you share your, um, your paintings. And just in case you didn't hear, my friend Marsha reminded me to tell you that I have a Facebook group just for students so no one else can see what we post there unless they've been in a class with me. So you go on to the Sacramento Art Classes Facebook. I'm sorry, that's wrong. You, you search Sacramento Art Classes students and it will be the group. You need to ask to be let into the group and I will of course approve you. And then um, once you're approved, you can post your finished paintings in there for everybody to see and comment on. Okay, so while I was talking, I pre-wet with just water this next guy. And now I'm going to take that dark color and on the brush and look at I'm just touching it on there. Maybe a couple spots. You can go as far down as you want. And then I rinse that out and then I'm going to get some of that magenta color and touch it here at the very beginning. You don't have to be super precise with your brush because um, you know to get down into that point because wherever your paper is already wet this paint will flow so having pre-wetting your your um, spot kind of does some of the work for you it 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 primes the paper and it gives the um, the paint a place to flow and as long as you don't bang it or tap it hard on your table it will not flow outside of that wet area so that means it's not going to drip all the way out here unless you have a ton of water and you just let it drip too far. So now I'm coming in with my precision brush and just pulling the paint that's already there. So again, I don't have any new paint on this brush. I'm just pulling what's already there all the way out to the pencil line that I drew. Sometimes I have to blot my brush on my towel right here because maybe I pick up a little paint and I don't want to move it around too much. Maybe I don't want to on purpose take this pink and mix it up with that um, the purple up there right here you see a hole that's because I accidentally didn't wet that part so I'm just adding a little water on there okay so already we have interesting different things happening with both of these shapes both of those spots and then you just let it be you don't do anything with it or mess with it all right um, so we're going to carry on doing that. Um, let's stay on, you know, I don't care. You can go back and forth to each wing if you want, but let's stay with just the larger spots for right now, because when we get to the smalls, I want to show you a little something different that you can do in those. And, um, while you're working, cause I can catch up with you. I'm going to see if I can try to see some more of your comments here case somebody had a question. I feel so bad that I can't see them tonight, but I'm seeing all these familiar names. Thank you all so much for coming tonight on a Tuesday night, a different night, and giving this a try. I think that this one will make a beautiful um, greeting card. It depends on how large you do it. You did it. Mine is six by nine, so it would be kind of a large greeting card, but or a gift or something, or something that you can teach to uh, you know, a friend. Let's see here. I'm just trying to, hi Rumi. Oh, that wasn't for me. That was for each other. Thank you for the hearts, people. Hi, Allison. Somebody, oh, Kristen, you're doing this on silk. Oh, I hope that you will share with us on that Facebook group. That will be so awesome to see because I can just imagine how it's going to flow around on there so beautifully. That's a really cool idea. I think that'll be so cool. Are you doing just one or are you going to do, I, I mean, is your silk stretched on a stretcher bar or are you making it kind of a scarf or something? I wonder if you're busy, you don't have to answer because I guess maybe we'll see it at the end when, um, when you post it, if you post it. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with some of these, and I'll keep checking back on your um, on your comments. But again, if you missed anything, I'm pre-wetting these with just water, 
And if I don't get all the way up to the pencil line, that's okay because I know that, um, that later, whatever dark color I decide to use for the background of the butterfly will cover up any little errors that I make. Like if you accidentally go outside the lines or if you um, just do something maybe wobbly <laughs> that you don't like. It's pretty warm in my room here tonight and I have a ceiling fan on so some of these spots are drying faster than others. If that happens to you, you can, um, you can actually add a little bit of water on top of the, you know, you can add water into your paint while it's on your paper. So if, you're, if it dries out too fast, just let go ahead and do that if it helps you out. You see me maybe moving my brush away from the paper every once in a while. What I'm doing is I'm blotting some of this paint off onto a paper towel that I have right next to me here. And I, I like to pick it up and maybe tip and swirl my paper around. I want to show you something on this one in case you want to try something different just for kicks. While this is still wet or any of them is still wet, you can get either one of your brushes and just have water on it and you can take just t don't like spread it like we're not painting like like this on my hand all you're going to do is drop in just touch your brush like that you could even or maybe i don't know if you want to squeeze it it may have too much water so maybe that's not a good idea but you can drop water on to the pre the already painted area and what it does is it pushes that paint out of the way a little bit and it makes what's called a bloom which is um, just a nice area that that gets kind of pushed around i think it's perfect the paint colors get pushed out of the way and almost makes like a little hole or i'll do another one up close on this one so you can see so this is still wet and i have just water on the brush i'm just going to touch it on there and if you look closely you can see that it sort of pushes the paint out of the way. I don't think it'll work up here because this is too dry, but yeah, that's too dry up there. But on this one, I can do it as long as it's still shiny wet. I can just drop water on like that, just touch it on. And then you can try, it's really subtle, but you can see it pushing, pushing out of the way. If you have something like this one where it got a little wobbly because my hand wasn't as steady as I wanted it to be, we're gonna be able to hide that with the dark outline that we're gonna add later. So just carry on and keep going with your colors. Um, so I think this one tonight, we have a good chance of finishing early because um, we don't have a whole lot of technique. You're kinda of on your own on this. Um, again though, try to stay with just the large spots so that I can show you something different with the small. And right now I'm feeling slightly impatient because that's my personality. So I'm going to pre-wet these both of these spots. You can stick to just doing one at a time if you want to. That's not a problem. I just I've been yeah I've been yammering a lot, so I have to catch up a little bit. So I'm going to do two at a time. So here's my dark. And I'm I did dark on the outs on the farther outside instead of towards the middle on this one because that body is going to be very dark and so I wanted the lighter magenta to kind of be it, the contrasting color so it would stand out nicely against the dark. Okay, so you can see I did not get all the way to the painted or to the pencil line. So with my detail brush, all I have to do is just have a damp brush and just pull that out. The paint that's if sometimes you might need a little extra dab if you don't have quite enough on there but I'm just going to use that to move what's already on the paper around so that it goes all the way out to my pencil lines. Of course you can add more paint if you want to if you don't you know if you want some more intensity you don't have to just pull what's here around you can always add more. And each one of these little spots is going to be slightly different than the other because some of them here's where I did that spot of water right here and it's making kind of that bloom that we talked about. Some people call them cauliflowers um, or runbacks. So they're all gonna be a little bit different. And here was the one I did before. So you can see they're all a little bit different. 
and that's kind of fun because I think it just adds to the butterfly. Some people may have iridescent or glitter paint or sparkly things that they can use and that this would be a fun one to do that on because um, butterflies do have that iridescence just kind of like hummingbirds do too. So that would be a, um, this is a good chance, a good painting to do that with. I see a place I missed, so I'm just gonna go in here. Um, next month, the next one that we're gonna do is on Tuesday, July 22nd, or 27th, July 27th. And I'm kind of sampling different times just to see what works best. And um, I wanna try 6.30, so hopefully that will work for people. Um, but that'll be the next one. And we're doing giraffes. It'll be from the neck up, so the neck and the head of a giraffe. I'll keep it simple and you can have it be whimsical, like a rainbow giraffe. And that's something that I did with the kids at school. I teach kindergarten through um, eighth grade. And so I did that with second graders and it turned out so beautiful. So that would be a great one if you have kids that are with you for the summer or maybe you're a grandparent and you have some grandkids with you you could um, get together with them that night or look at the video because remember it's recorded so you can watch it later with the grandkids or kids or whomever you want so same thing pre-wetting it dropping in the color rinsing my brush and dropping in the second color and this is not my not my detail brush so it's definitely a little on the messy side, but now I can come in with the detail and pull the paint where I need it to go. And again, if you need to put a little bit more paint on your detail brush, you can totally do that. And by the way, I wanna say thank you so much. Last month we did those elephants and they were really beautiful. I loved seeing everybody's um, sample that you shared. But um, I was doing a fundraiser for a pause, Performing Animal Welfare Society last month. So I was donating a portion of the tips to, um, to pause for elephants. And with your help, thank you so much. The 20% that I donated amounted to $35. So I, I held off a little bit because sometimes I get tips after the fact. And I, um, I made that donation today. So we raised $35 for elephants or any other animals that are in the performing animal category. This place is in, um, I had all the specifics. It's in the Sonoma area. Santa Rosa area, I can't remember, but they have a lion there, they have some tigers, they have African and Indian elephants. I think they said they had a, do they have a black panther or a panther? And I don't think they have a cheetah there, but it's a great organization and they um, have a nice habitat for the animals. So thank you very much for your tip donations and we could help them out a little bit. and. Um, I like to do one of those every once in a while. Last year we did sea turtles and I sent money to the sea turtles. So that was fun. Here I go again. I pre-wet two of them this time. And I'm gonna drop on the darks. rinse and then put in that magenta um, I'm still only working with two colors right now and like I said earlier if you want you could be using more than two colors just for fun maybe you have a rainbow butterfly um, but the third color that I chose was that light lilac color and I'm not using it yet because I'm going to use that on all the on the smalls the smaller spots but as I'm sitting here thinking and working on this bigger part, I'm deciding whether I want to maybe incorporate a fourth color. So I'm kind of thinking, do I really want to do that? What would look good with that? I kind of have an idea of what I might want to do. So I'm still thinking about it, but I feel like I'm going to add a fourth color in here just for fun. And if you liked some of the variation of dropping water into this. Remember, you can just get a wet brush and as long as your the area, the spot is still shiny wet, you can just touch on a little spot of water 
just almost like an eyedropper and it'll push that paint around and give you some very interesting and unexpected marks in your paint that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor is the kind of the magic and the spontaneity of of what happens when we um, let the paint do its own thing so you can't really control water you can control it to some extent but it's fun to sort of let loose with the watercolor and let it do its own thing so maybe you can give me since i can't see you maybe a few people can give me a, a little comment in the chat box and tell me if you are maybe halfway done with the large spots three quarters of the way um, just kind of give me a little bit of an idea of how much how many or how much of your i don't know how many you have but like what percentage of your large spots are you done with so then i'll know how you know if i need to wait some more before we go on into the little the other spots that would be great i'll look up in a minute after i finish this wing here or this spot here so I'll put my dark on rinse out I see one person telling me they're done okay detail This is a great one for you to do with uh, or teach to somebody who's brand new to watercolor because you almost can't make a mistake with this. It's so just kind of free. Okay, let's see here. I'm looking for it back. Okay, I see some people are done. Three quarters of the way done. Halfway done. Okay, so it sounds like I need to get a move on and get my last guy done here so that you guys can see what comes next with the other stuff. So I'm gonna wet my last large one here. Don't forget, if you want, you can pick up your paper and tip it so that those Two colors join up give it a little bit of help joining up and then with your detail brush work it around to the pencil lines um, also maybe you don't know this I have a YouTube channel and this is great for summer if you have kids around when we first had COVID last year I'm a school teacher and so I was teaching remotely on zoom from home and so I have a um, YouTube channel that has about 50 different videos for kids. It's free. You just go on, look it up by my name, Margaret Blanchfield, and you can see all the videos there that um, people have or that I have. So kids can maybe do some, some fun stuff during the summer. So if you need some ideas to keep kids busy, that is there for you. And then this this uh, class as well as several others that I've done are still on Facebook as recordings so um, you can go back and look at those too and share those with people who are home with nothing to do or need something fun to do this summer all right so so far we haven't had to use any type of heat gun or I haven't anyway and so I'm not going to worry about doing it yet because I'm going to move on to the spots um, the small spots this is where I was telling you that maybe I'll add a fourth color. So on my palette here, you see that I had this very pale lavender, kind of like a lilac color. I'm thinking it would be fun. Let me see, where's the one I want? There is a beautiful color called Viridian, which is a nice green. So I'm gonna do a little test. It's always good to test this out because if we're gonna be mixing colors, you wanna make sure that whatever colors you're going to mix will actually look good together and not turn out like an icky brown that you don't want so i'm going to put this aside for just a second and just this is a little um swatch book that i have and i use it for different things different paintings so that i remember what colors i was using so i want to test this out and see if i'm going to like viridian which is this one that is not my viridian where's my viridian here it is 
Okay, so this is Viridian right here. And here's the lavender. It may not blend together very well, or it might. Hmm, let me see, do I like that? I actually do. Okay, so I'm gonna use these two colors. Um, if you decide to use some fun different colors, test them out because sometimes like there was a possibility that whatever green you have, if you're trying to mix a green and a purple together or a lavender together, you could get an icky color. So test it out first. Um, and I'm going to keep all the outer spots with those kinds of colors on them. Because they're smaller, I'll probably do a lot of this with the small detail brush instead. So it's exactly the same technique that we've done on everything else. I'm going to switch back to this right hand side wing because this one is drier, whereas I just finished this left hand left guy. So I want to get that, um, give that a chance to dry. So you're just going to do the same thing that we've been doing all along. Let me get my Viridian a little bit closer to me and here we go. So pretty wet. I'll do a few at a time. Hey, can I get an opinion from you all too? Um, a lot of you have been wonderful repeat customers, so you'll you'll know how the flow goes with this class, but normally this is a 90 minute class. So my question is that, that I'm looking for an opinion about is, um, we may end at one hour tonight and that, um, and I'm trying to find simpler things because a lot of times I have the tendency to, to want to push you to do something super fun, but maybe it's outside of the, our ability to finish it in the 90 minutes. So I'm starting to think, well, maybe we're going to do a one hour class and simpler projects. So my question to you is, would a one hour class be better for your schedule. And of course, this is everybody's going to have a different opinion, so there's no right or wrong. So if you write better, I'll know that a one hour class is better for your schedule. And if you write worse, <laughs> then I'll know that no, you don't want a one hour class. So better means yes, one hour would be okay. Worse means it won't be okay and you prefer the 90 minute or, you know, maybe you don't uh, maybe you're busy and you're trying to catch up here and you don't want to answer. That's okay too. Maybe you can answer later. So I'm just kind of an informal poll. Remember, as you're doing this, you can always tip, tip the paper. Try not to use your brush to force the paint to do things. So you can see on these, I'm just touching that paint on with my brush and then I'm tipping carefully because I don't want anybody to go outside of their little lines and letting it mix on its own. So I'm gonna hold it up closer to the camera so that you can see better. I like that color combo, it's a little bit different. And um, don't stress too much if you don't get it all the way out to those pencil lines because probably your clear, if your clear water is out all the way to the pencil lines, the paint will travel there. As long as the paper is wet or damp, that paint's going to keep on moving. And something else that I haven't told you all in a while is that watercolor paints, as they, um, as they dry, they actually fade. So when you put them on and they're juicy and wet and beautiful and vibrant, know that by the time they dry, they will be a little bit more... Um, softer. They're, they're not going to be as, as much of an impact. So that said, these three spots that I just put on here, I'm putting on quite a lot of paint. I, I didn't dilute it very much. It's pretty strong green because I want to have a little something different there. So every single other one of these that I've done so far has been two colors, but on a couple of these, I'm just going to keep it just green. And I really packed on the, the paint in there. So I, these guys will They'll still fade as they dry, but I think they'll be a little bit more intense. They probably look on your monitor almost like just very dark. They don't look like black, but they read as a really dark color. So um, that's okay to do on some of these. And then these guys all go back to well, you know what, just for kicks, since I did some that are just solid green, how about I do some that are just the solid uh, 
lavender. Why not? You can mix and match and do anything you want. But the same for these. I'm really putting on a lot of paint. I want this to be pretty bold. I changed my mind. I'm going to add a second color in there. There we go. Okay, so since I just did all those spots, I have a minute to scroll through and see what you guys think about having a longer or a shorter shorter class. Stephanie says, worse. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you want the 90 minutes. Sandy wants 90 minutes too. I see a lot of people saying either. So I will uh, take all this into consideration. And then what did this one is a good comment she says it doesn't matter either way because we have the video so if you if um, if you need to see it again you can watch the video okay so I have finished this side of the wing I'm gonna turn it because I'm right-handed I'm gonna just turn this upside down so hopefully that won't confuse you but it helps me paint in that direction and um, I can also see that I did something on this spot that I don't like so I'm gonna just correct that Sometimes it's easier to see things upside down. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do all these greenies first. Uh, by the way, I always like to hear requests. So if people have a request for something for one of the future ones, in July we're going to do the giraffes, like I mentioned. but. If you want to request something for the future, I love to hear that. Um, and since we are either only going to have 60 or 90 minutes, it needs to be simple. So please don't say Eiffel Tower because I'm kidding, but that, <laughs> that'll take forever. So maybe something that you can think of that would be fun. Um, if you haven't been with me before, we did a couple of uh, buildings. We've done some seascape. We've done mushrooms. Uh, butterfly and we did elephants last month sea turtles all kinds of things And those two lavender ones that I just did, um, I'm going to drop in another, a little darker color into both of those like I did on the other side so that I can get some version of symmetry. And if you will bear with me for a second, I need to refill my glass of water. So I'm going to take my microphone off for a second and I will be right back to you while you're doing those so you can catch up. And we'll finish off that second wing in a second. to me again. Okay, I'm going to put this up a little bit closer in case you need to see a detail on this. And then I'm going to put up the other sample too because maybe that will give you, I don't know, ideas or something. So there's that one. Here's the other one. Peacock. That's a great idea. I did a large peacock years ago and Allison, who's with us tonight, actually bought it and um, made Marsha mad because Marsha wanted to buy it too. <laughs> but uh, that would be fun. Kathy, you're saying, how do we get a copy of the video? Oh, all you have to do, Kathy, is you go on um, uh, about five or so minutes after the class is over, Facebook will publish the video. And so you can go onto the Sacramento Art Classes page and you either click on events. So you'll see 
a list of all the events that I've ever done. So that's all the painting classes. And you click on the one you want and it'll, um, I believe it will play the video. If it doesn't, then click on videos instead and choose the one that you want and it'll play that for you. So there's probably a year's worth of videos and I'm getting ready to move some of the older ones to a different place because they've been up uh, for a while. I think I'm gonna move them off onto YouTube and I may actually charge for those. So if you, if you have been here, you got a chance to have those for free, but they will maybe turn into something that um, people pay a small amount. So if you want to get them, get them now. You can't get a copy of it, but but it's there on Facebook. So I don't I don't provide like a um, you know a DVD or anything like that. How are we doing? How are your peacocks? I mean, sorry. How are your butterflies looking? This is hard for me. I wish I could see the progress. Um, when I'm teaching my Zoom classes, I get to see what people are doing along the way. Um, I don't think I mentioned that. I also teach on Wednesday nights. Um, I teach a month long, it's four weeks long watercolor class. And I have a new one coming up. Um, the not next week, but a week from tomorrow, um, Wednesday nights from 530 to seven. And then on Thursday nights, I teach acrylics from five to 630. And those are on my website. You can look at the pictures are posted and there's a PayPal button for you to sign up for those. Those are $80 for four weeks. And we work for an hour and a half each, each night. Um, so that's a longer painting. It's not like this where we're just done in one in one session. We work on the same painting for the whole month. So um, if you go to Sacramento Art Classes, you can and you click on the tab that says Classes. You can check those out in case you want to try something with a little bit more detail than this, a little bit more technique and more involved. You can check those out. Um, you can also sign up to get my newsletter there. Just same place, sacramentoartclasses.com, and you click on the newsletter tab, and that will uh, get you one newsletter a month. I really hardly ever get <laughs> to do it more often than that, so you're not going to get a whole bunch of mail, but you'll get one a month, and that will alert you to whatever new classes I have. It tells you about these, tells you about if, I'm, if I ever teach a workshop. For a while, I was teaching workshops a couple times a year in Carmel, and I don't know that I'm uh, ready to do that again yet, but if that ever happens again, that would be in the newsletter so you wouldn't miss out on it if you sign up for that. Okay, so I'm done with all my spots. So what I'm gonna do is use my heat gun to get this dried out real quick while you're still working, or if you're done, you'll probably wanna get yours dried off too. So a heat gun or a hair dryer would be great. If you're using a hair dryer, you wanna stay far back because it has such a strong, um, you know, blow to it that it can blast your paint and your water all around and mess up your your design so you want to stay far away from it um, and maybe keep it moving gently away you know like a foot or so away from your your painting so you're going to hear a noise while i do this and it's going to take me a couple minutes um, and i'll be right back to you
Avery. Laura, you're asking me, am I recording? You're at work and you can't join. Um, about five minutes after the live class is over, it will be uh, posted on Facebook as a recording and I leave it up there for quite some time. So you'll be able to go back in on the Sacramento Art Classes Facebook page and either click on events and see if you can get to it through there. And if you can't get to it through there, then you wanna to go to, um, there's a tab that says videos. If you go in the videos tab, you'll see all kinds of videos that I've done over the years. Um, some of them are kind of announcement videos. So announcements of, um, you know, oh, this class is coming up, don't forget, you know, so those kinds of things. But if you look for things that are 90 minutes long or more, you'll know that those are the videos that, um, that I'm talking about here. So yes, you'll always be able to, to get, well, not always, but you'll be able to get those for quite a while. Okay, I'm gonna start talking to you about background. Um, so if you're finishing, go ahead and keep on finishing, but I wanna talk about colors and background. Um, I'm using a color called Lunar Blue, which is like a, um, it's like a black, blue, gray. You probably don't have that color and that's okay because you can make a color similar to it. This is what it looks like on the palette. Let me pull some out here and make a nice puddle for you. Um, the way, where's the, where's my camera? There we go. The way for you to get a color like this would be to take whatever black you have and put it aside in a puddle and you wanna dilute it. So we don't want it to be really thick and chalky black. You wanna add a decent amount of water to it. So it's kind of like the consistency of maybe, um, I don't know, like heavy whipped cream, you know, unwhipped whipped cream, or at least like milk, but not real watery like iced tea. So here's what I have. You can see how kind of, how diluted that is. And then into your black, you can add any color that you like. You can add a touch of purple. You can add a touch of blue. You can add green, whatever you like, and just, kind of play around and get a color that is appealing to you. And this next part is, um, can I get a couple thumbs up or, or hearts or something to see who's ready to go on um, before I jump into this? Because the next part is gonna feel like I'm going fast, but I sort of have to go a little bit fast because I'm working against time and paper drying. So, okay, I see a few hearts and things like that. We're ready to go, okay. If you're not ready, don't stress because this isn't hard to do um, and you can always catch up later. But the most important thing is for all your spots to be all the way dry. So no damp at all, um, get them to be all the way dry. We're gonna do the same technique that we did with each of these spots when we pre-wet it. So we did that wet into wet technique where you just have clear water on there first and then you're gonna take whatever your dark color is and drop it in there. Um, you have to have a steady hand for this. Um, sometimes we're, we're, we're working against the heat. If it's hot where you are or if you have a ceiling fan on, your paper will start drying out. So you may have to go back and re-wet a second time. So this is a little trick of what I do. With my slightly larger brush, I'm gonna just get some water into these larger areas where I don't um, have to be real precise. You wanna keep the water out of the spots. If the spots get wet, your black paint's gonna go in there. So have a Kleenex handy in case that happens. So just with this larger brush, I'm wetting that big area. Then I switch to the small because this is where I need to be a little bit more precise to get around these spots. Okay, so I'm pre-wetting. I'm doing one whole wing section and there is a method to my madness here. There's a reason for this. Uh, remember how we talked about how wherever your paper is wet, the paint will flow. So when you pre-wet a large area like this, your paint flows around so much more easily into all these areas and keeps it from being like blotchy and splotchy where, oh, here it was dry and then it's wet. And, and it just, it really makes it look a lot better. So you wanna take some time here to pre-wet things you'll miss a few spots but that's okay because you'll see them once you add the color in and you'll be able to correct it 
I'm not doing the body right now. I'm not. I'm only just doing one, one wing section, so like a quarter of the butterfly. Sometimes I have to go back over areas because things dried a little fast, and that's okay because it's easier the second pass. It's already been dampened one time, and so then the second time you go back with your brush, it flows around much more easily. And then once you feel like you have everything wet with a decent shine on it you don't need a lake or a puddle but at least kind of a decent shine in all the areas you're going to dip your tiny brush into the color and then if you just touch on like this it looks like polka dots right now but i'm just touching it on it's going to swim around all by itself into those wet areas see how it's staying out of my spots because i didn't get any water on the spots if you get water on the spots and you're worried, the best thing to do is abandon it. Go on to a different wing, let that wing totally dry up and come back later and, and re-wet it. You're not going to ruin your paper by re-wetting it a second time, but it's much easier to manage that way because you don't have, um, the spots are, are not wet. You're giving that wing time to dry out. Okay, so you can see that with this detail brush, I have quite a bit of margin of white paper still around my spots right now is the time that I, now that I've dropped all this paint in now I get to be a little more precise and take my time and take it all the way out to the pencil lines and really this is probably with the exception of maybe the drawing this is maybe the hardest part just because you have to be precise and you're trying to keep your spots dry but all I'm doing, it's that same technique that we did in each of the spots where we're using the detail brush to just pull the paint that's already here out to those pencil lines or right up to the edge of the spot color. Just trying to get rid of all of the white. If you make a little mistake you can blot if you can kind of curl or twist up your your um, Kleenex or get a q-tip you can maybe blot that way but you can maybe see on mine that there are areas where the paint is darker and areas where it's more diluted and it's lighter I, I like that I wanted that effect because I don't want just dead black, solid black. I mean, I know if you look at a monarch butterfly, yes, it is very, very black. It has that dark. But for our purposes here, I think it's more fun to have a lot of variety and granulation and just changes in the paint. So that's what happens here. If you want it darker in spots, all you do is drop on a little bit more color in certain areas. And because it's all wet, the paint will flow around, but there's, there are going to be places where it pools up and is darker okay so there's my that first section of wing here's the sample that's already done and you can see all the variation in that dark color I kept most of the body much darker so I probably went over that body a second time um, some things may be, have been still damp out here and I did the body and maybe I did the body again so that's your job now we have 15 minutes left of class your job is to finish all the wings if you don't finish during class um, there really isn't much technique to this you've already learned everything that we talked about doing so you're just needing to be a little bit more precise and just kind of have a steady hand take your time with this I do want to talk to you about one last thing before we finish so while you're working uh, remember how we did not draw those antennae is that the way you say it antennae not antennas anyway the little you know what I mean we didn't draw them with pencil earlier if you did it's totally fine but I didn't draw um, mine on the they're drawn on here but um, on the sharpie sample that I did for you so what I'm going to suggest to you is if you are nervous about having a real steady hand or maybe you don't have a super fine detail brush there is no harm or nothing wrong it's not a cheat 
to use an ultra fine Sharpie for those. You'll get beautiful, precise lines on the antennae, antenna, antennas, um, and probably feel more satisfied with how clean it looks if you, if you use a Sharpie on it. Not normal Sharpie, but they make one called ultra fine. I'll show you in a second because I have one here. Um, you could use also if you are a person that has art supplies, maybe you have micron pens, which are permanent and waterproof just like the Sharpie is. So those would be a good choice. And they make those in various um, different sizes of the tip. So I like an O3 or smaller. It's a very tiny little precise tip. But I just think that um, it just makes your life easier. And why not do something to make it easier? Because you're going to have this beautiful butterfly. And if at the end you try to paint them, and you f if you end up feeling like you ruined the whole thing just because of that, why don't you just take the safe route and use a Sharpie? This is a good time for you to do any cleanup work around any spots. If you wobble, if you did any wobbly spots or things that you don't like, your dark will probably cover and mask that, hide, hide those imperfections. Okay, so there's wing number two. If you look at wing number two and it's still damp and you see any areas that you want to be darker, you just drop on a little bit more paint in those areas. And like I said earlier, this is a perfect project to use some of those. Um, if you happen to have any pearlescent or luminescent or glitter paints or anything like that, this is a fun project to do that on because butterflies have that. Um, let me show you a micron pen like I talked about and okay so this is the ultra fine sharpie the tip is very precise and small it's like this up against my hand there we go and that's ultra fine and then this is a micron pen this is an 03 micron and it has a tip that's even a little bit smaller than that sharpie so those are perfect for your antennas. Wait till all your paints dry before you put those on. Um, and uh, I'm gonna scroll through and see if there are any questions that I missed here. Um, remember, if you like making comments, it's always fun to, for me to hear where you're here from because um, we've had people from other countries and that's always a little thrill for me <laughs> to see to have people come from other countries and we always have people from other states which is great so thank you guys for coming to from different time zones and those of you that are in pacific time thank you for being here um, and if again if you have a request for the august class july is going to be giraffes um, but august we need a subject and again, the July one is July 27th, and I'm gonna test out the 6.30 time slot and see how that goes for people. I don't wanna take up your Friday date nights. Everybody's probably ready and chomping at the bit to get out of the house since a lot of the restrictions have been lifted for COVID. So maybe people are trying to get out more often. And I think it's prime real estate on Friday nights for you dating folks.
If you would like to share your finished work, I have a Facebook group. It's called Sacramento Art Classes Students. So just look that up, search that on Facebook and you have to ask to get in, but I will approve you. And then you can post there because the only people who see it there are people who have been students before. Some folks don't wanna have everybody looking at their artwork. They only wanna share it with other students. So that is available for you. Uh, and you get, you're going to get really nice compliments and comments from other students because everybody's so supportive and nice. So don't be shy. It's a nice place to, if you've never shared a painting, it's a nice audience. Also, you know what, if you're brand new to watercolors and you've never painted before and you're painting with all of us tonight, that would be fun to know. Um, and if you are brand new or newer and you have any questions, go ahead and throw them out there, either now or, or after the fact. I'll look at the, the um, questions and try to answer everything. Because I remember there were some things when I was first learning to paint that no one ever told me. And... Um, one of them was I, after each painting session, I would rinse, I'd squirt my paints out of the little tubes into the palette or on the paper plate or whatever I was using. And after class, I threw all that away. I, I rinsed it all down the sink and it's a huge waste because you get to, I mean, you can save your paints. You, they can dry up and you can reuse them five years later. They don't go bad unless something happens and maybe one of them gets mildew on it, but that's pretty rare and that would only happen you know, when it's cold and damp. But um, that was just an example of something that no one ever told me and I was wasting all this expensive paint by rinsing it off my palette. You don't have to do that. This, These palettes that I showed you tonight, I just let them air dry. I leave the lids open and I let them air dry and, um, and then close them up. I'm gonna take them with me traveling and I'm doing a painting trip soon so they go with me. What else can I tell you if you're new? Um, on my website, there is a tab that says resources and in there I list things like the colors that I use in one of my big palettes. So if you're looking, if you're new and you don't know what colors to get, those are the ones that I use. There's also a video in there that shows you how to stretch watercolor paper. We don't really talk about that in this class because this is just kind of an intro thing to get you hooked. and. You know hope that you come back for the more detailed classes but there's a video that shows you what stretching watercolor paper is and how do you do it um, what else can I tell you that maybe you didn't know some of the kids at school never heard of this wet into wet that we're doing they just think thought that you just put on the pa put the paint on the paper and you can you can you can do that you don't have to pre-wet but Pre-wetting it gives you a different look, which I really enjoy, and I think it highlights the magical things that watercolor paints do. So maybe you never heard of that. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything else right now. If you want any of your spots to really jump off the page later, maybe go back while the black background is still damp and drop in some some more dark right in there. It'll make the um, that change in value between your really dark background and your lighter, brighter spots will be way more intense if you kind of darken up the dark here and there. So that's a way to really get things to stand out. 
You can also go back over a watercolor at any time in the future. So a week from now, if you want to come back to this and do a second pass on this black background, you can. You don't have to do it all in one pass. A lot of times we do, they're called washes or glazes, which is just different layers of watercolor over the top of each other. And it makes a beautiful effect. Um, some painters I know who, and I do it myself, will do as many as maybe even 10 layers or 10 glazes sometimes because since it's transparent, every time you add a new layer, you can still see the colors beneath it and it's just really beautiful to see the richness of all those colors. Okay, we're coming up to the end here. I see it's 824, so we have just a few minutes left. Um, if you are not ready, remember, you can go back and look at this, but I want to show you what I'm going to do on the body. So I'm going to do that. I'm sorry, I see it was a little bit off camera for, the, for that part because I was twisting my paper. But for the body, I'm not going to pre-wet it. I'm going to paint on dry paper like what I was just talking about because then I'm going to have a very intensely dark body and that intense dark I'm going to carry it down into some of the wings a little bit too you'll see what I mean in just a second so this is like very it's pretty thick and I'm going to get that on there then now I'm going to rinse out my brush so let me hold it up so you can see how dark that is then I rinsed out my brush so I just have water on it I don't have any paint at all see how dark that is and with that wet brush, I'm gonna touch on the edge of the body and merge that into the wing area. So a lot of that real dark paint is gonna travel into these areas that may still be damp on the wings. And if you look closely, you can probably see it's traveling down the wing because that one in particular, that wing in particular was still wet. But I can pull it down so it blends in. If you have to, you can rinse your brush and get it um, turn maybe turn the paper but just pull some of this dark down into the wings so it has a nice blend you don't want to have like super dark body bam up against wings that are not as dark you want to do a little bit of a blend and the way to do that is to just have a damp brush if you have to you can blot it on your paper towel or something and there we go and that's it. With the exception of the antenna, I finally finished one during class. Woohoo! I hope you did too. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. You can look at that and work for another minute. I'm going to scroll through and see if anybody asked me a question that I didn't see. Let's see. Do you seal the painting after? Um, you're done and want to frame it and if you do what is the best way to do that okay well usually watercolor is framed underneath glass so that will protect your painting and your paper so you don't need to seal it at all you want to um, get a mat and catch the edges of this underneath a mat and then put it frame it under glass if you if you do want to seal it and I, I really never do this, but the way to do it would be to buy something that is called workable fixative. It's a spray, and I buy the Krylon brand. It's K-R-Y-L-O-N, workable fixative. And you do a couple of light mists over the top of this, and it, it prevents, it kind of seals it. So, I mean, you're not going to spill water on it, but if, if it got a little damp, it would, it would help protect it. But I don't varnish it or anything like that. Um, the only reason that I would use that type of technique would be, let's say I want to glue this on a, on a board, like on a hard, hard panel or hard board, I would spray workable fixative on it, a few coats, let that dry, and then I probably would varnish it because you need to protect that paper and then more, I would probably glue it onto wood. But that is not a way that I usually um, mount it. I usually frame under glass. It's much easier that way. It's kind of a lot more detail to, um, to seal things. 
Okay, so that was a good question. Thank you. Um, pink flamingos, Denise is requesting. So that's a cool idea. Oh, come on, thing. Again, I apologize because this silly Facebook is not letting me um, see all your comments at once. Let's see, what is for dinner tonight? I already ate, Karen. I had a Cobb salad. <laughs> That's funny, you guys, it's, it's cute. Usually I do talk about what my dinner is gonna be, but maybe I will get a dessert. I don't know, we'll see. I have some ice cream. How about a hot air balloon? Okay, so we had flamingo, peacock, hot air balloon. Those are all really good ideas. Um, how do you control paper curl when you get it too wet? Okay, that is something that you can do if you, um, pre-stretch the paper uh, and it's kind of too involved for me to explain here but there is that video on my website just go to sacramentoartclasses.com and click on the resources tab and you can see um, the video but basically the paper is stretched tight like like a drum on boards and so when it gets wet it doesn't buckle and fold since we're doing it on flat like this if I get a lot of curve to my paper even after it's dry what I'll do is um, I'll take this this dry one wait till it's dry put it on a clean surface like your counter face down get the back wet make sure no water seeps around to the front side so use a sponge or a brush to get the back wet let it sit for a minute and the paper will start to flatten once it does then you can lay some paper towels over it and like a stack of books and every day or so you change out the paper towels it takes a couple days and then it'll dry completely and perfectly flat and you won't have to um, do anything else to it so that's a way to get around it if um, if you haven't and let's see I have a piece of clear acrylic from Home Depot you could do yes you could um, I'm not sure what your question is there but you could wet the back put paper towels and put clear acrylic over it pirate ship asking for a pirate ship okay I think that's it I will I promise I'll go back through these in the next couple of days and see if there were any of your questions or comments that I missed so what I want to do is switch up the camera so I can say goodbye to you face to face because I always like to do that don't forget the next free one is July 27th, which is a Tuesday, and that's gonna be um, at 6.30, and it's on the website if you have forgotten. So here comes the switch up. If you're dizzy, look away, because you're gonna see the, my hand. Actually, you're gonna see a big close-up of my hand. There I am. Okay, ah, my microphone cord has me leashed. Okay, thank you very much. That was fun. We actually finished on time, yay. Um, I'm going to see you next month. Thanks again for everything. Um, if you care to leave a tip, I will put the, the information back up in just a second. So you can do that if you want to. But remember, it's not required because this is the free class. It's always appreciated, but not required or expected. So no worries on that. And if you're brand new, thanks for giving it a try. Hopefully we see you again next time. So bye. And here we go back to the table in case you need one last look at anything. There we go. I think I have, ooh, I have Tin Roof Sunday ice cream. So if you really want to know, I might have that. Or no more food because I've already eaten enough tonight. Let's see, can I squish this out? I'm looking at my focus thing to see if I can make it smaller or bigger for you. Um, don't forget, you can post your paintings up on the Sacramento Art Classes Students Facebook page page and I think that's it okay good job thanks everybody good night